everything we can to provide assistance to them. Uh, in the short term, our goal obviously is to help the international community and the I'm making this for a Barney uh, doll. As a team to do everything we can to, to recover these young That's ladies. why I'm videoing. Uh, we're also going to have to deal with the, the broader problem of, of organizations like this that uh, uh, you know, can cause such havoc in people's day-to-day -day lives. Boko Haram, a militant Islamic group whose name means Western education is a sin, has taken responsibility for the kidnappings. Last night we recorded on a video of a Boko Haram leader bragging about the kidnappings, saying, quote, I will sell them in the market. And quote, Western style education should end. Girls, you should all go and get married. Still, 56 girls did manage to escape their captors, and now one of them is describing the terrifying moments. NBC's Ann Curry translates her story. We were sleeping at night. Suddenly, there were some soldiers who came in and asked us all to get ready because we would be attacked by Boko Haram that night. We were happy to be in safe hands. But they weren't safe. The soldiers who took them turned out to be the very militants they thought they were fleeing. It's taken about three weeks for this tragedy to grab a lot of the world's attention. Protests are now springing up from Abuja to New York City to Washington and in the U.S. Senate. The 20 women senators serving there are now asking the U.S. and the U.N. to step up efforts to bring some kind of end to this crisis. Here is Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar tonight talking with Rachel Maddow. I will note, as many girls are missing, as we lost people in the horrible tragedy with Malaysia Airlines, and I think you know how the nation was riveted on that story. Well, it is time to look at human trafficking. Joining me now is student activist Jennifer Sova Pierce and Comfort Arrow International Crisis Group's Nairobi-based Africa Program Director. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, you heard the senator there speaking mm. just about an hour ago on our air. Uh, making the point that it's been obvious to many, this tragedy and this epic scale of human suffering Oops, did not initially draw enough attention. Tell us what, what you've been doing to try to change that. So basically here in Washington, D.C., I got together with um, some other friends of mine who are also college students and a college professor and just rallied um, up people, mobilized people to really come out and protest and really raise their voices to, you know, really condemn the actions that are happening in Nigeria um, with Boko Haram, you know, against this whole idea of Western education. Um, we've been lucky enough because, you know, social media activism, um, like we've seen from Tony uh, 2012, really, really pushes attention and really, like, makes people really pay attention and really make people, you know, become accountable and really push for the action they want to see. Yeah, and it makes people pay attention, which uh, comfort can make politicians pay attention. Mm -hmm. I want to play uh, some sound from the press.